Hey everyone, it's Ross, and uh, today we're doing a lot of things. It's the weekend, finally got some time away. We're basically taking out this whole raised bed. This was a raised bed. This is where the raspberries were on this end. And then on this end here was the blackberries. And we've moved around blackberries so many times, um, even raspberries, that now I think I'm finally done with it. Finally uh, settled on an area for them. And also the varieties I've also settled on. But today I want to talk about the figs because this, on the end of this raised bed, which was a foot high, was Taramo Unknown. This is an unknown fig found by Big Bill in Lancaster. He found this fig in Maryland, Zone 7. And you can see here I planted the entire root ball of this tree because it was in a five gallon size container. We planted this above grade, the entirety of this root ball. Now, this is a big experiment to see if this one would get through the winter time because a lot of people have been telling me, and it makes a lot of sense. I'm not gonna agree with, I'm not gonna disagree with conventional wisdom here, that because it's planted higher, right, these, these roots will have uh, exposure to a lot colder temperatures than if they were in the ground. Well, how hardy is the, root, the roots of these fig trees? I don't really know. I really can't tell you. I know 17 degrees is a really good number. Anything below that seems to take significant damage at the root level. And if the roots take damage, then the top's gonna die. Um, I can tell you that the roots are intact. Uh, now, I did a lot of damage here, ripping this tree out. We had lots of roots that are still in the ground. But I, you know, couldn't really get this thing out of the ground because it rooted itself so well this tree grows so well in this raised bed last year that it's a testament to just the amount of heat that this tree was getting because its root ball was above grade, which means it's getting more heat as well in the summer. So this thing grew like mad and put out these roots that I couldn't keep up with. Also, the top growth was massive. I, you can't really tell here. But this tree was uh, six or seven feet tall. I even air layered off a big chunk of it. Point is that this entire root ball was above grade in a three or five gallon size pot. We had a foot high worth of raised bed. We covered the sides with straw the raised bed and this thing got through the winter. So what I'm gonna do now is actually plant this guy in the ground because it's alive. Now I tried to cut this back as far as I could to see exactly what was alive, but this main trunk here is certainly alive and that's a pretty, that's a pretty common thing for fig trees that you plant the first year is that they just need some time to adapt. They need some time to settle in a little bit. And a lot of them end up dying back to the base the first year. Now I wanna show you guys another tree. This tree we just planted in the fall, also in a one foot high raised bed. You can see I'm doing a lot of renovation here. We're putting a lot of raspberries actually where this fig is. And also in you know lots of blackberries in this bed as well. But the point I'm trying to make here is that this fig tree survived the winter. And look, here's the root ball, here's the proof. This is a five gallon size pot. We even put this root ball, by the way, uh, we even did a video of me planting this and talking about the whole experiment. So if you wanna go back, you can see exactly what happened here. Really the step-by-step -step of all the things I went through. Essentially, we just covered this with soil up to about here, right? but about a couple inches of this root ball was indeed below grade. And I wanted to make sure because I wanted to see just how high above grade I could plant these figs. The higher we plant them, we're essentially mimicking them as if they were a container plant, right? Containers have access to a lot more heat. I can get a late fig here to ripen mid season because they're in a container. I get a, a whole month's worth of head start just by having them in a container versus in the ground. Now, if I were instead to plant my figs higher and replicate them as if they were a container, I don't know how, how early they're going to be. I really can't say. I really can't say for sure. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that also the wood in the container uh, is not dying back, right? So if let's say this tree here, which it hasn't, this wood is completely intact. It, do, it does look a bit straggly, but I've done the scratch test on here. This wood is actually 
somehow has gone through the entirety of this winter. This is called uh, Marseille from Edible Landscaping. This fig has made it through the entirety of the winter with very minimal damage. The only damage it took was on these limbs here that were not fully hardened. You can see it's, you know, it doesn't have the moisture in it anymore. But this tree here, because it survived the winter with almost no damage, and also because it's above grade, let's say we left it here, this would essentially ripen for me, I imagine, sometime around early August, which is incredible for an in-ground tree. That's around your earliest varieties of figs in my area. That's around this right time that they ripen. So what we're gonna do is actually move this to a different location because this is gonna be where the blackberries and raspberries are. And we're gonna move this guy to where the figs are going. And we're gonna plant these all in a row, essentially. We're giving them about three feet of space. We've already talked about this at great length. Maybe you guys have seen that video. One of them I actually stepped on, unfortunately. Hopefully it comes back. <laughs> We've got some, uh, some trees planted in there that are much larger. And I'm really excited. What I am gonna do, I think, this tree suckers quite a bit, so I'm not gonna worry about this one, but these other ones here, like LSU Champagne, and uh, this is Long to do. We're gonna cut them actually back to the base. This is Azores Dark, you can't even see it, because we're gonna cut them all to the base and let them re-sprout from a lower point and get them to form that bush shape. But isn't that incredible? that these guys have survived in a raised bed. Now, I don't know how much colder, if you live in a colder place than I do, maybe this won't work, okay? I really don't know. Um, you know, this is only one year's worth of data. Uh, also, we did get down to two degrees Fahrenheit here, and we, when it was two degrees outside, I tried to come out here, I did. I came out here at like three or four o'clock in the morning and tried to take the temperature of the soil and it just was inaccurate it wasn't reading because it was so cold my uh, tools were really just not good enough but what I'm gathering here is that fig trees the roots the roots of these fig trees are much hardier than we think and let's say even the wood were to die back it's okay because we got them planted up so high on this mound creates a lot of thermal mass. It has a lot of heat early in that spring and even late in the fall. Uh, these trees are just going to go absolutely berserk. They're going to go absolutely berserk and they're going to put a lot of these container plants, I think, to shame. And I honestly, I mean, I think what I'm going to end up having to do is put all the early varieties in the ground and really only have a select number of container plants for select varieties that are either mid-season or late you know maybe i'll have one variety in a container that produces a good braba or something that's exceptionally early that's going to ripen way before any of the containers or any of the in-ground trees so i think that's the direction i'm heading in and that's really why i'm planting so many fig trees in the ground this year you know this is another area that we're gonna be planting fig varieties in. We've already got one in the ground here. This is the more experimental bed here that I've talked about. You definitely have seen that video. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're gonna have somewhere around the neighborhood of like 50 different varieties, I think. All in an effort really to see what's gonna survive. I think I'm gonna end up sticking with the varieties that will survive the winter with either very minimal da damage or, or no damage. And then also what tastes really good, um, what's early, of course. And uh, we're gonna just constantly try to plant these things higher. Now, what I do wanna mention is that this is a nice little berm here, okay? It's a nice little raised mound of soil. This would've been perfect to plant a number of, a, a row of figs in, but what I think I am gonna end up doing is we're going to put these raspberries in here and these blackberries on the mound. And then what I'm going to do is potentially come in here in, in, in the future and plant a row of figs on the edge, the edge of the bed and even a row of figs on this 
this edge of the bed and kind of limit the raspberries and blackberries to just the mound and kind of really try to contain them. I think I may end up going with in the future trailing blackberries that just go along the ground kind of like a, a raspberry or a, a strawberry wood so I think that's what I'll do for that bed and then this bed over here we're gonna leave this bed alone except I'm gonna put some raspberries down in here and uh, mostly June berries because I think June berries are the king um, they really are king because late in the season there's a lot to pick and the June bears just fill a huge early gap in the season worth of fruit. And we'll fill this whole bed in nicely with them. Um, otherwise, nothing is gonna be in this bed. We'll probably put down some mulch um, and we're gonna put down some stone on each individual tree. That's for sure. But for the most part, the mulch will not be here because I want this soil to warm up quickly, right? I want this to really replicate a raised bed. Uh, and a container, I should say. So that is the video, guys. Uh, this was a really crazy, awesome experiment. Um, hopefully, I can inspire you guys to at least try this. Again, I don't know if this is going to work for everybody. Okay? But uh, it's really been um, something, I think, that's going to be a positive force in my yard in the future. All right, everyone. Take care, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you all soon. All right? See it for tomorrow's see it for tomorrow's video. <laughs> okay guys, take care.